Hello Facebook. Hi everyone. I'm just kind of waiting for everyone to come online, making sure everything is ready, which I think it is. Um, welcome, I'm Kelly from spiritualawakeningsigns.com and I help people who are moving through the spiritual awakening process to do so with reduce symptoms and move through the transition as easily as possible. The main message that I want to share with you guys is that spiritual awakening doesn't have to be hard and there are things we can do to make it easier, which is what this uh, 3D Live event is all about. So if your awakening is currently out of control, overwhelming, racked with anxiety, um, emotionally turb turbulent, and this live event is specifically for you, that you are the exact person that I've made this for, um, I'm so glad to have you with us for the event, which I hope you will find is jam-packed with simple, structured, step-by-step -step and down-to-earth things that are going to help you to reduce your symptoms and definitely make that process much, much easier. Um, today is day two, so if you didn't catch day one, that's okay. It's still available on our Facebook timeline. If you just have a little scroll down, you'll find it or um, on our YouTube channel as well if you want to uh, complete the task from day one, which we'll be talking about shortly. Um, so in today's class, I'm going to cover some things that are inadvertently making your symptoms worse, um, and we'll be continuing to ground your energies through some of these techniques. And I am interested to know if anyone did the homework from yesterday. So anyone who's watching, um, you know, did you do the task that I set for you yesterday? How did you get on with it? please let me know in the comments because I'm really interested to know um, and I'll be answering some questions just shortly. So let me know if you did put some of those spiritual items out of the way um, and out of your space. I saw that Marta, who was with us yesterday, had just commented on one of the posts saying that she uh, moved the crystals out of her bedroom, out of her space and finally had a good sleep last night. So that's a fantastic result. I'm excited about that. So um, feel free to say hello and I'll see your comments below. I'm going to make sure that I can see them at the side. Excuse me just a second. Um, so I'll answer some of your comments as I'm moving along. Like I said, let me know if you did the homework. I'm checking up on you guys. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll have a quick reha uh, recap and get back into some of this really important information that's going to be making a difference for you. So let's have a look. Uh, John is with us from the USA. He was here yesterday. Thanks for joining us again, John. Um, Beatrice is with us. Trisha, Anne, hello. Doreen from Los Angeles. Jeannie, hello. It's good to have you with us. Um, so I should be able to see all your comments. Sometimes technology plays up with me. I don't know if it's energy or what, but I can see them here on my laptop. So um, feel free to mention and say hello. And like I said, let me know if you did that homework because I am checking up on you guys. We're doing something about this and I'm going to nag. I'm going to make sure that you do it. Okay, so we'll have a little um, overview of what we touched on yesterday. So if you missed yesterday's lesson, please don't worry. Like I say, you can get the information um, and the video again on the replay on the timeline or on our YouTube channel. But I'm going to be going over some of it again today anyway, just to really make sure that everyone's got a clear perspective and understanding of exactly what's going on in your system and your body at the moment, so that you can understand why I recommend what I do and why it makes sense to do that, how that's going to improve your symptoms. So we're going to be uh, working on, on all of that. Okay, let's see. Okay, so what we, we touched on yesterday was the process of how awakening begins. So awakening begins with a large influx of white light vibrational energy that comes into your system. Okay, so that's usually the point where we start to recognize that we know something's changed, but we don't quite know what it is. So intuitively, we can sense that some sort of change has happened, something's different. We just don't quite know what it is yet. We're not able to articulate what, exactly what that is. And this high white light is very ungrounding to our system. It's a higher vibrational energy than we're used to connecting with ever on the physical plane. It's extremely ungrounding, but it has a purpose, okay? So next what happens is that the energy is thrust up through your chakras. So we know we have the chakras right along the spine, up through these points in the heart, the throat, you know, you've got them up through here. That energy blasts right up through this to give you that nice clear channel to the divine, okay? And then what happens as a result is that your emotions become extremely heightened and highly sensitive. 
And it's interesting because I get so many emails and comments from people saying, you know, my emotions are all over the place. I'm crying at the drop of the hat. What's wrong with me? Nothing wrong with you whatsoever. It's all part of the awakening process. However, if they're too powerful and it's really overwhelming and you're feeling quite emotionally broken and unstable, there are things we can do to improve that. And that's what we're going to be working on today. The next thing that happens after that energy has come into our space and up through the chakras, it's uh, heightened our emotions. The next thing that happens is that it opens our psychic senses. Okay, so you might have been intuitive before. Um, you might have had an awareness of that intuition before. But whether you had it before or not, it's going to be blasted open. And you're going to be seeing, hearing, feeling sensing things that you have probably never experienced before um, which can be quite dramatic and shocking initially uh, it's quite overpowering so you're very very open spiritually this is why I tell people you don't need to open your third eye so many people ask me how can I open my third eye I'm like whoa 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 we need to close this thing down a little bit <laughs> you know it's it's actually too open if anything so you know there's no need whatsoever for you to open up psychic senses at all on the awakening process you're already 10 times more open than the average person is it's more a matter of learning how to control it and bring it into alignment the next thing that happens is our empathy becomes extremely sensitive so this is when we start being aware that we are picking up other people's stuff so we're hanging around in places we're picking up energies and feelings and vibes from the community, the people around us, the building we're in, the land that we're on. Sometimes there's just vibes about something and you just can't explain why. It just has a feeling about it. That's your empathy being extremely heightened and it becomes so sensitive and so acute uh, that it can be quite challenging to be around people in a normal daily, daily life. Uh, it can be challenging to be in crowded environments too. Absolutely normal. But the point is that all of these things are the purpose of awakening. The purpose of this entire process is to get you as healed and clear as humanly possible so that you are a clear channel for that white light energy and so that you are being taken back to who you authentically are. Who you are at source, that spark of God, that, that little spark of divine white light that you actually are. Because you're not all your issues on the top and the universe knows that. And it limits your life. All these assumptions we've made about life being hard and everything has to be a struggle and you have to, um, you, you know, you have to suffer to awaken spiritually. These are all old concepts and old ideas that are no longer in resonance with who we are and what 5D reality is supposed to be like. You'll hear people talking about that. The new world isn't supposed to be like that. The new world is what life is like when we remove all these negativities, all these uh, presumptions about life that are not accurate, not accurate anymore, okay? They're not serving us. So you're getting back to being as clear and as healed as you possibly can. Um, that's the purpose, getting back to who you really are. So now that we know that what happens, we, we, we know that unless we actually ground that high vibrational energy, we're gonna get really difficult signs and symptoms. Um, it's like, I always go back to this analogy of like an electrical uh, charger plugged into the socket in the wall, left there with nothing to charge. It just, it, it charges and charges and charges. It overheats, it buzzes. And that's what happens to our physical bodies when we don't ground this initial influx of white light that woke us up in the first place, okay? So it's the concept that if we don't ground that energy, our emotions are going to get even more sensitive. Our empathy is going to get even more painfully um, attuned. You know, your psychic senses are going to open even further, which is often where we lose our psychic boundaries and start seeing things that are scary or confusing or a little unnerving, or we're being bombarded at times that aren't appropriate. These are all what happens when we don't ground that initial influx of light energy. And there are simple ways to do that and that's what we're covering <clears throat> so the first step is to ground our energies by removing any energetic stimulants so this was the homework that we talked about from yesterday and i'm really interested to know if anyone did it and the kind of results that you felt usually takes a few days but just let me know how you got on with it if you did that 
And if you didn't, then you could double homework tonight because it's really important to take these steps if you want to see changes in your awakening. It won't happen without them. So it's important that you know that, you know, we're moving these energetic stimulants from our space. So we were talking yesterday about things like crystals, incense, essential oils, um, you know, anything that is designed to affect your energy positively or negatively. Most of these things are designed to bring healing, to bring grounding, to lift your mood, to support your energy, to open your heart. They all have positive uh, reasons. They all have positive attributes. The challenge is that because of that initial influx of white light that I was talking about, we are already so opened and so sensitive in our energies that these things affect our energies even more. They charge us more like that electrical plug in the socket. And when we get so charged up, our symptoms become completely out of control. And that's never a good place to be. That's never going to serve you along the awakening path. And in fact, it's going to keep you stuck for so much longer because you'll just swirl around with all these challenging symptoms, looking for the way out, grounding as the way out, absolutely. So it's important that you know that. Okay, let me have a little look at the comments because actually not much is coming up on, on my uh, phone here. Let's just have a little look. <clears throat> And let's see, Marta says, yes, just realise how I'm picking up stuff from the TV and the internet for sure. It's true for others too, definitely. So this is when we're talking about our empathy being so incredibly heightened. Um, it actually becomes hard to watch the news. It can become hard to watch movies, adverts, um, to see signs of things, to, uh, to come into contact with so many different things because it just affects us on such a deep level um, and it can be really difficult. Let's see what else. Heather saying hello from South Wales. Hello. Let's see what else. Um, Doreen, how about religious statues and pictures? Admittedly, um, that's not something that should usually affect your energy, but usually doesn't really work within the spiritual awakening field. So if it's something that, if you remove everything from your space, the crystals, the incense, the oils, and you still feel um, that you're not completely grounded, then look at taking taking that stimulus away, any religious picture statues, and just see if it makes a difference. Everybody's a little bit different. So these rules apply to everyone, but within that, we can all be a little bit different in what affects our energies and what doesn't. Um, certain things make us connect up inadvertently, and the more you connect up, the more you're stimulating that energy. Don't worry, I'm going to be explaining more about that today. Let's see, Jeannie says, the way you explain this makes me think this happened to my daughter years ago and I just didn't know what it was um, and now she's just gotten to a crisis point. That's really possible. Um, most of us, Jeannie, don't know that it's an awakening when it actually happens to us. Most of us are like, what is this thing? Have I gone crazy? You know, is there something wrong with my mental health? Am I imagining it all? It can be quite an unnerving and frightening time and for a lot of people, um, we don't know what has happened. In fact, a lot of people end up in the... Um, you know, through the, the the medical system, you know, with drugs and uh, different therapies and different approaches. And really sometimes all that does is stunts the growth that, you know, stunts the energy from being able to fully express through. So, you know, even if that's happening for you, um, for your daughter, for anyone, just focus on grounding and you'll always improve that. Absolutely. Let's see, Trisha, I've been smelling smoke for hours at a time that others don't smell. It's a bit unnerving. Is this normal? Like I said, normal during awakening doesn't really apply. Um, could be past life stuff coming up, could be issues with fire, um, could have a meaning to it that you need to unravel. Um, I'm just wondering if there's something else there. I feel like there could be a connection, uh, a kind of Native Indian, a Native American connection there that might be coming up. But like I've said before, these things all need to be unraveled by ourselves. We need to allow our consciousness and our psyche to unravel them and make sense of them. And then you get the little jewel of wisdom at the end. It's really quite powerful. Let's see. Lorraine says, my pattern is that I get my energy back to a point where for one day I feel a million dollars and then the next day crash. Yeah. And we've talked about this, Lorraine, because um, Lorraine's been through some challenges with fatigue and, and chronic fatigue, um, which is what I worked with kind of before, which is really common for us, um, really, really common for us. So it's possible that a lot of things are coming up for healing. But I also feel that you need to look around your space and look at what things are charging your energies and get them out of there. Get the, Give your energies a break so that you've got a chance to kind of recoup 
and see how you're doing. So, and thanks for joining us. I haven't seen you in ages. I hope you're doing well. Okay, so I'll come back to some of the comments in a little while. I want to make sure we're moving on with this uh, content and, and really um, giving you guys a crash course in this stuff to make things better. So let's see. Right, so the next step for us, now that we have spent yesterday, hopefully, removing those energetic stimulants from our space, okay, and if you didn't do that yesterday, just do it today. Just make sure that you're getting the benefit of this three-day course by really testing the method out. I'm completely confident in it, so please, please try that. So you can remove those things from your space. The next step that we want to do is to refrain from activities or practices that stimulate our energies. So the first part was we're removing physical things that affect us, remo removing items. The second step today is we're refraining from things that are going to charge or stimulate our energies. Okay, And they generally come in two main forms. So I'm going to explain a bit about that. So energy healing. Whether you are giving energy healing, receiving energy healing or any form uh, of, of healing that affects your energy, it generally opens you up both emotionally and energetically um, and that can be a problem so avoid intuitive healing energy healing or modalities and alternative methods because it will charge your energy undoubtedly it will charge your energy which will open you up further which will you know intensify the emotional triggering which will make the emotions worse okay it's a little pathway and if you get on at that end and you do these things, you're going to charge your energies and you can end up at the other end where things are really difficult for you. Don't do that to yourself. OK, now I'll explain more about this, you know, as we move on. I'm not saying never. I'm just saying for the next couple of days while we're doing this series, refrain from that if you can. OK, we want slow and steady. When you engage in energy healing practices, um, and there are some that you can do that are safe, and I will be covering that at some point, but when you engage in things like that, you're going to charge your sim you charge your energies, which makes your symptoms worse. And we really want slow and steady. Slow and steady is the best way. That's how we stay in control, so it's not a good idea. Okay. The second form that we want to stay away from is uh, spiritual practices. Spiritual practices um, also really tend to charge our energies and a lot of them are really energetic stimu energetically stimulating, even though they might feel calming to the body. Okay, they might feel relaxing and calming, but actually they're stimulating your energies. Um, and the problem that we've got is that they actually encourage the energy up through those chakras. They talk about the Kundalini. They actually, a lot of them stimulate and encourage that energy to flow up through the, the centre column here and it's a problem because that is the thing that opens you up even further so like that initial process that awoke, awoke you you know heightened your emotions heightened your sensitivity heightened your empathy you're starting that process all over again all over again and you're intensifying it so this includes things like meditation I hear people all the time saying I'm meditating all the time it's not getting better this is why Meditation, yoga, mediumship, um, intuitive training, uh, purposely instigating astral travel, you know, forcing yourself into that space or trying to open your third eye. Please also be really careful because there are a lot of well-meaning practitioners and therapists and healers who will tell you that it's safe. They'll say, no, no, this is absolutely safe. And they mean well, but if they haven't been through awakening, they have no understanding of how sensitive or explosive our energies can be um, and the, you know they will mean the best will in the world but they don't understand so you need to be really careful because if they haven't been through it they won't understand um, and then you could put yourself into a dangerous situation where you're at a crisis point and your symptoms are terrible and that practitioner is not going to be able to help you because they haven't been through it okay um, so these are all the types of things that can cause us to have intense emotions frequent emotions with a lot of triggering because it literally opens up those pathways of the chakras and that can cause too much to come up too quickly. So when you open up all this space, you've got to think all those blocks that are sitting in your chakras from all the all those past lives are all coming to the surface at once. And that's when we start to feel like an emotional disaster and we can't explain why we're feeling what we're feeling or why it's come up when it has. Um, it can make you feel vulnerable and really broken uh, and just 
unstable. It's not a good place to be. And I know because it happened to me and it was not pretty. So please don't do that to yourself if you don't need to. Okay, so we're, I'm going to explain more about this. I'm not saying forever. I'm just saying for the next few days. So your challenge for day two, which is today, I want you to refrain from any spiritual or healing practice that will stimulate or charge your energy. Okay, just until the three day challenge is over. Please note that I'm not advocating that you never do these things ever. I'm just saying don't use them for the next few days because what we're trying to do is to give your energies a break from that consistent charging um, that has been intensifying your symptoms. And I'm absolutely confident that, you know, you can look at this face, absolutely confident that if you can take a break from these, you will make big changes to your awakening and how you feel throughout your awakening it is absolutely the key and it will make such a massive change um i'm definitely confident of that and i want you to get that change i want you to you know do these tasks and notice the difference for yourself so that you develop a level of understanding but also truth because you know i would always say don't listen to you know don't take anyone with their first answer always test whatever anybody tells you to find the truth within you so this isn't your truth yet, this is my truth, but I'm sharing it with you and I'm hoping that when you apply these principles that you'll, you'll see the effect that it has and you'll discover more about the awakening process as a result of that. Okay, um, also I know it's hard, it's important to note that I do know it's hard. None of us want to take a break from things that we enjoy and spiritual things that we love, um, especially when they're such an ingrained part of who we are. But remember, we're only taking a break for the next few days. We're only doing it long enough to give our energies a chance to reground, to really fully reground. And it's important for you to know that it won't always be this way. Um, things will get better. And once you take a break, you find that things start to come together in a different way. So I can safely enjoy all of these things now. They're not a problem for me. But when I was going through awakening, sometimes the tiniest thing could set me off and I would be feeling unwell for days and the problem is that it takes a few days for your energies to come back down so you'll always hear me say that prevention is better than cure and when you're in a vulnerable position uh, during spiritual awakening prevention is better than cure don't allow yourself to become so ungrounded that you feel awful just keep that balance there keep bringing it back um, and you will be able to enjoy them again but it's also important that you note that after these three days that we're taking a break, that you very carefully add these things back in. Because what you don't want to do is find yourself that you're really grounded, you're feeling better, you're feeling more stable, your symptoms are reduced, and then you bring everything back into your space and you start meditating again, you're doing yoga, you're doing energy practices, you're just going to blast yourself back open, okay? You need to be really gentle with yourself and you need to take your time when you're bringing these things back in. So... I encourage you to do the three days. Three days will make a difference. If you can do a bit longer, a week will make a big difference. Two weeks, transformation. Absolutely transformation. Um, but you can't miss anything. Okay, you need to be vigilant with it and you need to really give your energies a chance to fully ground without being charged. And then once that's done, that's when you start very gently adding things back in, just little by little and always testing and monitoring how you feel. Always like a little scientist watching the results of everything that happens so that you're gaining some power around this experience and you actually have um, some control over it because it's a hard thing to get control of, but this is definitely the key. Okay, let's see. Is there anything else I need to cover? I think that's it. So we'll have a look at some comments and questions. If you have anything you want to ask, pop it in the, um, the comments box and I'll answer. But to just to really reaffirm that homework for you. So the challenge for today two, for day two is to refrain from any spiritual or healing practice that will stimulate or charge your energy. And if you're not sure what they are, pretty much all of them stimulate or charge your energy. There's only one or two things I've really found that are safe and grounded enough to practice during awakening and I will be covering them at some point, so don't worry. Um, and I hope also that you can see from, from the material that I'm covering and from today's class that grounding is vital. Uh, you know, I think people are probably sick of hearing it because it seems like such a boring thing. But grounding isn't as simple as just 
you know, using some essential oils or doing some meditation because these things have the opposite effect for us. It's really hard to ground our energies. It's more a matter of removing what stimulates you so that you're giving your energies that break and they'll ground by themselves. You don't have to do anything. They will ground by themselves, but you have to give them a break. Um, for most of us as spiritual people, we've probably never been out of the presence of crystals or oils or incense um, or meditation or yoga. You know, there are ingrained parts of who we are. So it can be hard to recognise that some of those are stimulating and creating a problem. Okay, so it takes a little bit of practice to really understand and recognise it. But please try today to avoid those things. Try tomorrow to avoid those things. If you haven't already removed those things from your space, the energetic items, I want you to do that tonight. And we'll see how we are by the end of these three days. So let's see what else I need to cover. <clears throat> Yeah, basically just grounding is vital. <laughs> to sum up, grounding is vital. Um, and it really is the thing that's going to take you from like crazy emotional awakening experience that's like a roller coaster where you're white knuckling it, you know, holding on like, I hope I get through this, to, you know, calm, stable, structured, connected to source, clear in your intuition and aligned with your purpose. It's really as simple as that. Um, you know, Creator didn't make it that complicated, but it can feel that complicated without the right advice. So I really hope that that helps. Okay, let me take a little look at some of the comments that we've got here and see what we can do. Let's see. Okay, so Judy is asking, she says, yesterday you told me to remove anything stimulating for three days to a week. Are there other things that can cause stimulation? e.g. hormones, coffee. I also found that we have a ley line and a portal in the house. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, okay, so as for having a ley line and portal in the house, yes, that can definitely affect you. But what I would say is that if you can focus on removing anything else that's stimulating in that space, you'll probably find that it helps. Um, I'm just having a little tune into that to see if that is affecting... Um, Yes, it is affecting your energy, but I feel that if you can ground it, it'll improve. Uh, I also feel like energy downloads would really help you. Um, I'll be covering the course tomorrow, but the course that we're just about to release has got energy downloads in it to help clear and ground the land, your home um, and your physical space. And that might actually be useful to you because it feels like uh, there's a little bit of energy work needing done on the land to really improve that for you. But you can still make improvements with grounding. So I would say... Don't worry too much about things like hormones. Um, notice in your physical body how you feel. So I keep my focus on spiritual things. Remove spiritual items because they are going to charge you. Stop spiritual practices and healing practices just till you ground yourself because they're going to charge you. Um, other things like you're asking about coffee, I would say it depends how you feel in your own body. Spiritual things are the main focus, but if you remove those spiritual things and you still feel ungrounded, then you want to look at, okay, I'll try removing coffee. How do I feel? I'll try removing medications that I'm taking. How does that feel? Um, I don't think it's going to be as complicated as that for you, but if you feel that you remove some things and you're still charged, that might be worth a look. Um, just test it. Okay, let's see. Uh, Beatrice says, even praying for others. Whatever I'm seeing, colours and waves is beautiful and very peaceful. It's with me 24-7. It's like protecting me, protecting me. I'm in this golden ray. Now, that is the challenge, right? And I know this firsthand because it almost became like an addiction for me. So I was constantly going into meditation, connecting to my guides. Um, I'd like to say calmly discussing, but I was crying. Please help me. I don't know what to do. How am I going to get through this? Why is this happening? Bombarding them with questions. Fortunately, Spirit is very patient because um, I sure gave them a run for their money. But it can be hard because these are things that we enjoy and we feel drawn to doing. So what I would say is that, pr yeah, prayer um, could be stimulating for you. Why don't you just take a break for the next couple of days and just monitor how you feel? But you can't, you can't have that in between. So with anything that we're talking about, spiritual items, spiritual practices... You can't say, okay, I'll have three days off, but I'll just do 15 minutes of meditation or I'll just do 10 minutes of prayer. That'll be okay. It's not. Our energies literally um, 
It's like, you know that thing at the fair where you bring the big hammer down and you hit the bell and it goes boom. <laughs> that's how fast their energies move. That's just the, the vision that's coming to my mind. You know, you have to be vigilant with it and really give your energies, honour your energies and give them the break for a few days. And then you can probably gently go back to it because I, I know it feels like it's something you really want to do and that's okay. But just take a little break and go back and dip in and out until you learn to straddle those two worlds. Because before you can manage to do both, you're going to swirl into crisis in one of them. And it's usually the spiritual one because that's what I did too. So have a go at that. Let's see, Jeannie says, a medium told my daughter to do a daily practice of envisioning Archangel Michael cutting any cords, then add a protection shield to her, then envisioning hard shell cracking. I'm thinking, should she even stop this? Do you know what's tough? Sometimes you get lots of different perspectives from lots of different healers. I tend to uh, try to connect to source without other perspectives because source is just source. It's just clear. And the truth is the truth. And when you keep lifting off all these other practices and um, rituals and all these other things, you find the truth at the bottom. I would say, I would say try it without. Unless it's creating a lot of fear for it. If it creates a lot of fear for her not to do that, then it's too much to just whip that away because she needs it right now. But I would say that, yeah, any type of, um, you know, visualisation, connecting to guides, connect, even angels, all these lovely, wonderful things, they'll be stimulating. So just give it a break for a couple of days, see how she feels and then test it. Just allow her maybe to do it one night and see how she feels over the next few days. Very, very gently because I know her energies are really volatile at the moment. Just test it and see how you go. Judy says, thank you so much. My screen kept flashing while you were talking. Sounds like you told me what I, what was needed. I'm glad to know that, Judy. You know, it's really weird. Um, I've noticed that the screen flashes. It doesn't happen for me when I'm watching the screen, but when I see the video back, it, it flashes and I think there's a lot of energy coming through for you guys. Um, but fortunately, because I'm not having the, in, the intention of doing downloads over the three days, the video, I don't know if anyone has noticed, has been no problem smooth <laughs> smooth with no interruptions so it must be to do with the energy downloads we're bringing through so please make the use of them and maybe the videos will be better when they're you know when they're out there for free um let's see marta says don't even consult your intuition that's okay consult your intuition but i would say do it in a sense of rather than going into a practice of deep meditation or visualization just kind of do it by connecting to self and saying, does this feel right for me, yes or no? And the first answer you get is the right answer. Usually what we find is that our intuition is the first thing to rise to the surface and then our brain interrupts over the top. So if you want to use your intuition but you don't want to go into um, a deep meditation in case it's going to affect your symptoms, what I would do is ask yourself a question. Literally as quickly as that. If you ask yourself a question and get your energy to look for the answer, you'll find it within yourself without having to connect up to any other external source. It's all inside. And that's what we're learning on this journey. Let's see. Uh, Jeannie says the video immediately froze when you started to answer and hasn't restarted yet. Okay, so maybe um, maybe it's not quite as clear as I thought. But hopefully on the replay, if you, if you didn't hear what I said, you'll get it on the replay. It should be clear. But basically, to sum up, I would say test it. Take it away from, from her and... Um, avoid that for a couple of days and see how she feels unless she's really afraid in which case don't whip it away but if you're stuck just send me an email Jeannie and I'll, I'll help you out no problem okay let me see I want to check in case these are coming up differently um because some of them are strangely okay Hayley sorry I missed your comment Hayley Hayley says I can't watch EastEnders or the news or angry harsh people I sense energies on the telephone how long does this hermit phase last now it's cutting off the rest of the comments. I'll do I'll do my best. Um it says not been around people in five months. Hide in bedroom. Yes, and I hid in my bedroom too. Um that's a natural part of your compassion uh and your empathy opening up, but it can be really hard to manage. So what I would say is always come back to grounding. Any challenge you're having, if you focus on grounding and you remove those stimulants from your space and you avoid those spiritual practices and energy healing for just a few days, you'll notice an improvement. Now for um, empathy that's as intense as yours is, Hayley, which I can relate to, it makes it so hard to even watch movies. Sometimes it's really hard. Um, what you want to do is consistent grounding and removal of things that are stimulating. Um, and you'll find that that does improve. It gets better. 
but it's probably also an indicator that you're in healing phase and healing's ready to happen. So someone actually asked me um, today, sent me a message saying, is grounding all you do? Um, which I just want to say thank you for because I actually highlighted something that I had to cover. Um, these things are always really valuable. But it's important that you know that I go on about grinding so much because I really want to drum it into you guys that that is the key to all your symptoms and improving them and moving through the awakening process much more easily. Once that's done, um, so like the next few months, we're going to be on healing. So I really want to make sure this group, this collective group that's with us now is nailing grounding every time, reducing those symptoms so that we are prepared and ready for the next healing phase that we can all move through together. Um, so I really want to be able to take you guys on that journey, but you've just, you've got to nail this stuff first or you won't be ready and you certainly won't be able to handle it. So please make the effort to um, take responsibility for your own awakening and ground yourselves and I can be beside you and share all the other stuff that you, you might need. Okay, let's see. Good, Jeannie caught the end of the answer. Anastasia, okay. She says, thank you for this. I'm having a panic, panic attack that I've got something horribly wrong with me as I've got tingling and numbness at the top of my head and I've convinced myself I've got a brain tumour. Even though I've cut everything out, I have a lot of physical symptoms as well as huge empathy and tearfulness. Okay, first thing, big hug. Big hug to you, Anastasia. That's an awful experience. Um, however, I actually can relate to this. So what I can tell you is we have issues that start coming up. So I was talking to Haley there about, you know, um, being in healing phase you're in healing phase. So what's happening is that issues from past lives are starting to come up and usually that's triggered by your soul starting to remember all the times that you've died, all the ways that you've died, all the uh, health complications that you've had. Now you imagine there's a lot of that because we've had a lot of lifetimes. So as that start, stuff starts to bubble to the surface, it can create a lot of anxiety and panic because that's what you would have felt in those lifetimes before. Okay, so it's just a natural part of this coming to the surface and certainly having any tingling, numbness or sensations in any particular area of the body will alert you to where those blocks are. Okay, so this is the important thing I want to get everyone to get and this is kind of preview content for what's coming over the next few months. Wherever you feel the most uh, discomfort and the most issues, you feel energy, you feel movement, you feel aches and pains, that alerts you to where an energy blockage is in your system. And that's something that's coming up for healing. And that's why you can feel it because your soul's like, please heal this. This is the next thing we need to deal with this. So please don't worry too much that there's nothing wrong with you. It's all part of the awakening experience. I know a lot of people that have had head issues, migraines, pains, they feel that they've got tightness, they feel tingling, they feel, you know, um, fingers through the hair, strange sensations. Everything for me was in the heart space aching pains, uh, shooting pains, um, not much fun. But it's important that you know that if you ground, it will improve. If you ground, it will reduce it and then you'll be ready and prepared for us to move into this healing phase where we can gently start to release that energy and make you feel so much better. Really important. Okay, let's see. I just want to check if there's anything I've missed. I think that's it. Just want to check that I haven't missed anyone's comments, but I think that'll be us for today because I don't want to make it too long. Um, that's really good. So uh, remember to join us for tomorrow because that's the third and final class in this little series that we've done. So we've covered physical grounding. Everything we've done over the last two days, yesterday and today, has been about physical grounding. So we've removed energetic stimulants that are items and today we're removing energetic stimulants that are practices. Okay, um practices um, or you know spirituality in, in some form that's what we're removing so that's all the physical grounding tomorrow we're going to focus on energetic grounding okay because that's that's the other half to this balance we need physical grounding but the one that everybody misses is energetic grounding and that was the thing that transformed my awakening okay I was doing all these things to try and ground myself physically and it just wasn't really working 
Um, however, I didn't know to remove certain things from my space at that time, but I was trying a lot of grinding methods. They were not working. And the reason is because you have to marry physical grinding with energy grinding so that your your whole system is completely supported, your physical body is supported, and your energy body is supported. It's really, really important. So that's what we're going to be covering. Um, we'll also be talking about when grounding doesn't work and why, so that you've got a good understanding of that. Um, I'll include some um, energetic downloads that will provide healing and support, kind of to help you move through the awakening more easily, certainly more easily, um, reducing those symptoms and to balance grounding on both of those sides, uh, which is vital. So um, don't miss it. And I just want to thank everybody who came live and everyone who's watching the replay, thank you so much for coming, guys. It means a lot to me to be able to share this with you. And uh, I really am excited for you to get results. So uh, get that homework done and keep me posted on how you do. And I will hopefully see you all tomorrow for the last part in this three-part series. Thanks so much for joining us. Bye.